Look at this. Look. AI is getting too crazy. Huh? get some grapes later okay honey are you losing your mind trying to make your ai avatars look not plastic well today we're talking about the best workflows for character realism so that you can improve your avatars and your influencers let's take a look so i came across this account right here which is getting quite a lot of views 13.5 million 7 million let's take a look at one of their videos So I wanted to see if I could recreate something like this using the new model from Ideogram, which is Ideogram character right here. This model is known for its really nice character realism. It claims that you can take a single reference image and basically put this character into any scene or situation that you want. So I'm going to try to do something similar, but instead I'm going to take Game of Thrones characters and turn them into pirates. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is come into VidBuzz right here. And for those that don't know, this is basically what I use for all of my images and prompts most of the time. And so we can see I already have a picture of Jack Sparrow in here. So I'm just gonna select that image and generate a prompt off of that image. Here's the prompt. Now, just to get a rough idea of what this would look like, I'm gonna go ahead and generate the image here. And this is what we are getting out of VidBuzz. Now, of course, I could switch this over to character mode and I can turn myself into a pirate by clicking this button with myself set as the character. And so now we can see here is an image of me as the pirate. But now coming over here to ideogram, this allows you to essentially take one reference image like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag Jon Snow into the reference image. And then I'm just going to grab the prompt from VidBuzz right here and paste this into ideogram. Right now I'm using ideogram on foul, which basically works the same way if you were using it directly on ideogram. So now I have Jon Snow as the reference and I have the prompt from VidBuzz and let's see what we get. And so here's what we ended up with. And yeah, I would say this did a really good job of taking Jon Snow's face and putting it onto this pirate character. As we can see, that is a super accurate uh, copy of the face. Now, I did that a few more times with some of the other characters, and then I brought them to life inside of Kling AI, and here's what I got. So overall, I think it works pretty good, but there are some drawbacks here. For example, if I'm trying to create a pirate of my influencer, Kira, right here, we can see that these are you know, the images that I was able to generate out of VidBuzz. Now, taking that same exact prompt and using it in Ideogram, we can see that these are the results from here. So one thing that I've noticed is that Ideogram is much more conservative in its outputs than many of the other models. The other major downside here is that Ideogram only understands the face. It doesn't necessarily understand the body profile of your character. So if you have a very specific character with a very specific body profile, for example, bringing this image of Tyrion back on the screen right here, obviously it's not going to understand the body profile of what Tyrion's character is actually supposed to look like. So the conclusion is this, if you're going to be using a character over and over again, I still think it's a better idea to actually train a model of that character in your favorite tool of choice. However, if you just need a quick character or a one-off use case, then the ideogram model works really good for that. So next up, I came across this account right here, which is doing a really nice job making their characters or the models look really 
really realistic. And so coming to the account right here, the thing is if you're creating a bunch of random models and random characters, then the process is quite a lot easier. But if you have you know, a specific character or a specific AI influencer, it can be a bit more of a challenge to make them look consistent and realistic. So let's try it with Kira. Hey Kira, can you get real for a second? <sighs> I just don't really feel like being that realistic right now. Come on, just get real for like 30 seconds. Oh my god, fine. Alright, there you go. Are you happy? Gotta say, not bad. Wait, what the hell? So the way that I created that is I basically just took some screenshots of this Instagram video and I brought those images into my media library here on VidBuzz. So let's just select this one for example. So now you'll see I have that screenshot in the active image. So now if I come over here and click generate prompt, it's going to generate a prompt based on that image. So now I can switch this over to character mode, make sure it's on my character Kira, click generate, let's see what we get. Okay, so here is what I ended up with from that. So what I can then do is click this little check mark. So now this becomes the new active image. And what I'll do now is switch this over to consistency mode. And with consistency mode, you can choose Nano Banana, Runway Gen 4, or Context Pro. Now, Nano Banana is the best. I'm gonna go ahead and click Nano Banana. And so now if I come over to the filters, I can start creating this image from different perspectives. Let's go ahead and do one from behind. And as you can see, I got this error message, which because Nano Banana is a Google product, it's generally going to be the most censored. And so if you run into censorship issues, what you can do is switch this to Context Pro because Context Pro is generally the least censored out of the bunch. So I'll come back over to filters again, and let's try this shot again. And so this is what it gave me right here. So as you can see, I basically went through and did that, creating multiple perspectives. I then took those images and created a model of Kira inside of Higgsfield, because Higgsfield does a really good job of creating character realism. After that, I ran the images through Magnific and Enhancer to improve the skin textures and realism. I then touched up the images in Photoshop Photoshop. And then from there, I brought the images into Clean AI, and this is where I animated all of the clips. Now, at this point, I obviously had a bunch of vertical video clips like this, but I wanted a horizontal version for YouTube. So coming into Runway, if I click Generate Video, and then coming down here to the model, I'm going to expand this, and I'm gonna change this to Gen 3 Alpha Turbo. And now if I click this little icon right here, this is the Expand Video feature. And this allows you to take a vertical video and make it horizontal, or vice versa. And so after doing that, here's what I got. Now, if you're wondering how I created the cartoon version of Kira, basically all I did here was bring in this image into VidBuzz. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in to become the active image and make sure I'm on consistency mode right here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to Nano Banana. And all I'm saying here is create a 1990s Disney style cartoon animation of the woman. I'll set that as the prompt, click generate. Let's see what we get. Okay, so here is what I ended up with and this was the original image, so I would say that looks pretty good. Now I can also select this one as the active image, and here I'm just saying remove the background. Okay, here's the new image. So now I'll select this one as the new active image, add the character into a 1990s cartoon style Disney animation coffee shop setting. Let's see what happens. So I made two generations here, and that one looks pretty good. And this one, it actually put her sitting at the table, which is kind of cool. After doing that, I brought the image into Runway and changed it over to Act 2. And then I created this little reference video right here. Let's take a look. I just don't really feel like being that realistic right now. And so after generating that, I ended up with this. I just don't really feel like being that realistic right now. From there, I brought the clip into Eleven Labs to convert the voice into Kira's voice. <sighs> just don't really feel like being that realistic right now. And that's how I was able to get these clips right here. I just don't really feel like being that realistic right now. Next up, I found this one which inspired the intro of this video. I thought it was a pretty cool concept. Let's check it out. Look, look how crazy I like this. 
So yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool concept. So I tried to make my own version of this and here's what I got. Look at this, look. AI is getting too crazy. Huh? some grapes later okay honey which by the way all of the viral videos that i've been showing on this youtube video i found right here inside of vidbuzz io i can switch this to either tiktok or instagram and set the filters for all time last six months 30 days or last seven days and this will show me the most viral ai videos over the last seven days i can also come right here to the categories and this is going to show me individual niche categories which again i can jump into any one of these niche categories and check out all of the most viral videos within that category if i find something really cool that i like i can simply take a screenshot, come to this little icon right here, paste in the image, and save that to my media library. And then as soon as I'm ready to start creating, I can click this paintbrush, open up my media library, and start building prompts off of all of the images that I've collected. Just for fun, I'll select this image that I just added. I'll click this button to build a prompt. I'll change the aspect ratio to 9 by 16. And then if I click this button here, it's going to generate the image. And so here's what it gave me based off of that. Now I can also come right here and switch between the different image models, or I can also come down here and tell it to iterate the prompt however I want. So in this case, I'm saying make the creature wearing a top hat. When I click this button, it's going to basically insert that and iterate a new prompt. Here's the new prompt. So now when I generate this image, we should hopefully see this creature with a top hat. And there we go, here's what I got. If you wanna check out VidBuzz in more detail, I have a full demonstration with the link down below. In any case, back to the project at hand. The way that I did that is I basically just generated this image of Kira, and then I went and took the dog for a walk and I captured all of these little clips of myself taking the dog for a walk. From here, I basically just took snapshots out of these recordings. So then I would end up with snapshots like this. And once again, setting this to consistency mode on Nano Banana, I can simply bring these these images into the reference slot down here and then I can just tell it what I want to happen for example put the woman next to the man and so I basically just went through and generated all of these images putting Kira into these various scenes now I did end up getting a lot of funky stuff as well or weird ones like that and so I just kept changing up the prompt a little bit until I got a handful of images that I wanted and then I brought all of those images into Kling AI to animate the clips in some cases like this one I use first and last frame and that's pretty much it alternatively if you come up here on cling ai and switch this over to multi elements here you can upload the entire video clip and then just put the reference image of kira right here and then down here in the prompt i'm saying using the context of the video seamlessly add the woman from the image and then it will basically just take kira and put her into the video clip now this one turned out pretty decently but sometimes these don't really turn out that well and so it can be better to use starting images and do it that way so that you have more control over the character placement and so on but if you want to see a more detailed breakdown of my workflows I actually just launched this new five-day creator challenge which is completely free to join and so inside the five-day challenge if we come to the community here you can ask questions and everything like that if we come to the classroom it will take you day by day up until you reach day five showing all the fundamental workflows that I use and then if we move down here there are some premium modules that you can unlock as well but again joining and going through the five-day challenge is not going to cost you anything so feel free free to come check this out. The link for this will be down in the description below. So after trying a lot of these different workflows, here's the one that I like best at the moment. Generally, everything that I do starts
starts in VidBuzz from finding viral ideas to creating the prompts to creating all of the raw assets, the images, the characters, and everything. After creating my initial character inside of VidBuzz, I'll bring the images into Magnific, which does a really good job of adding detail and realism to the image. From there, I'll bring the image into Enhancer, and this is where I will improve the skin textures. Now, just so you can see the difference here, the image on the left is Kira before doing any of these enhancements. And then on the right, this is the image of Kira after doing these enhancements. And you can see how much more real the skin looks compared to the image on the left. Keep in mind, there are some strange quirks with these tools, which can actually make your character look a lot worse. So again, be sure to join the five day challenge so you can see a more nuanced version of this workflow. In any case, I'll follow that process with a handful of images, and then I'll bring those images into Higgs field to train a character inside of Higgs field. Because again, if you use the right prompts and the right settings, Higgs field does a really good job of creating realistic characters. Now, what you can then do is you can take those images from Higgs field Field, and you can bring them all the way back into VidBuzz to then train a more refined version of your character inside of VidBuzz so you can use it forever forward after that. So those are some of the character workflows that I'm using at the moment. Hope this was helpful. See you in the next video.